So, you wanna learn how to make a pokey video? Let's get into it. What's up guys, my name is Jacques Q, and today we're gonna to be covering how to make a pokey video. Now to my knowledge, uh, she does have a video editor. If I can find their Twitter, I'm gonna put it right here. Uh, they do an extremely well job. Like her videos, they're pretty entertaining for the most part. They highlight her personality very well and they keep somebody entertained. But I do wanna clarify, I cannot cover every single effect in, one of her, in every single one of her videos. Uh, that would take us a very long amount of time. But what I did is kind of go through her videos and find the effects that are very common and I feel like that add a lot of quality to the videos. So we're gonna cover those. And those effects that we're gonna be covering are zooms, transitions, and uh, basically when graphics pop on a screen and a lot of like motion that goes on with the video. So let's go ahead, quit wasting time talking about it, and uh, hop in the mirror and I'll show you how to actually do it. Now something that Pokey has in every single one of her videos is this like Bezier zoom. It's kind of hard to understand what's going on unless you slow it down, but basically it zooms in kind of slowly, speeds up, and then slows back down, which makes it very smooth and easy on the eyes. And I'm sorry if you guys hate me for this, but uh, we're editing Arnold today. So to begin, you're gonna to wanna to go over here to your project files and uh, we're gonna go ahead, right click and go to new item and add in an adjustment layer. Make that, uh, go ahead and make that 60 frames per second, hit okay. Grab that from our project files and drag it on top of whatever you're trying to zoom in on. Go ahead and trim this down because we don't really need all of that. Go to effects on the top right and then you're gonna look for an effect called transform. Go ahead, click that and drag it on top of your adjustment layer. Next, you're gonna to go to effects controls in your top left, scroll on down. We're gonna animate the scale and the position for this effect. Grab these keyframes, we're just gonna move them up a little bit more. Next, we're gonna move our playhead forward a little bit. Uh, we're gonna set two more keyframes here, and let's say we're gonna zoom in about mm, 400, close enough. Now, if what you're going to zoom in on is in the middle of the screen, great, this is as far as you have to go, but let's say you're not in the middle of the screen. In our case, we're gonna zoom in on Arnold's ear here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and adjust that to where the Y value is in the middle make it to the X's in the middle, and there you go. You're on Arnold's ear. Now we have a kind of boring zoom going on, but to make it nice and bezier and smooth, we're gonna go over here to position and scale, hit these little arrows right next to them, then grab this keyframe on the left, grab this circle right next to it, drag it down as far right as possible, grab this other keyframe, drag it as far down and as far left as possible, and do the exact same thing with your scale keyframes. But whenever you're doing with the scale, try to make sure you can go down below this line here, but you're gonna, cut, you're gonna wanna try to keep them even, so. Do the same thing as we did with the position keyframes. And then as we look at it, boom. You scale in nice and pretty on Arnold's ear. He's happy with you and he might give you a little kiss later. Now spice to zoom up a little bit more. You're gonna wanna close these position and scale keyframes so you don't have to adjust anymore. Next, we're gonna scroll down and click this box that says use composition shutter angle to turn it off. And then you're gonna change this value to about, uh, I'd say 180. And essentially what this does will add motion blur whenever the zoom is going on. It's very subtle, but like I said, it's ma it makes it a lot easier on the eyes and it's something that you just won't pick up, but you'll notice subconsciously. And that's it, that Bezier zoom is very simple and nice to do, but it adds a lot to it. Next thing we're gonna be covering is basically the exact same thing we just did, but with multiple zooms. It's so similar in fact that you can actually just take the adjustment layer you just made, copy and paste it over, and then we can edit it a little bit more. So that's what we're gonna do. Drag it on over a little bit. Now, uh, we do have our original zoom here, right? So we zoom in, but let's say we wanna zoom in a little bit more, as we said. So let's say we're just gonna move it to, uh, 480 sounds good, and we're moving forward again. Move it up to about almost 600, works for me. Go ahead and adjust the keyframe just like we did in the past effects. And I'll see it in action. And there you go, you have a nice multi-layered zoom, and it's super simple again. The next thing we're gonna be covering is this like swipe right transition or swipe left. We're gonna show you how to do the swipe right one, but once you understand it, you can make it for a lot of different directions. So to do this one, all you have to do is come over here to Project File Again, drag another adjustment layer on top of what you just made, kind of make it a little bit smaller here because we're not gonna need all of that room. Now, since we've made this one, go ahead and hold your Alt key, left click on it and drag it up so you can copy onto another one. Next, we're gonna go to Effects in the top right and look for an effect called Replicate. Go ahead and drag that onto the bottom adjustment layer. Then we're gonna go back up here again, look for an effect called transform that we just did for all of our nice little zooms. Drag that onto your top adjustment layer. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on this bottom adjustment layer, which has a replicate. Scroll down in effects controls and go ahead and change this count from two to three. And as you can see here, all we've done is basically replicate the video file multiple times. So whenever you're looking at it, it's all just played multiple times. And essentially what we're doing is we're starting on like the left side of the screen on one of these video frames and then we're just moving over to another one. You can also do this diagonally and vertically however you want. I'm just going to do the simple one that she has where you're moving to the right. 
Next, go ahead and select this top adjustment layer and it affects controls again. Scroll on down. Now you're gonna wanna set your scale to 300 and essentially what this will do is just zoom you in so you're the right proportion. Now we're gonna move our playhead over here a little bit. We're gonna be animating position, so go ahead and hit the stopwatch there. Now I've already gone ahead and found the value for the farthest left one. So go ahead and type in 2880. And essentially what this does is set you on the most far left video that's playing in that uh, nine person, that nine video square. Then we're gonna move forward a little bit. And then we're gonna set the next X value to negative 960. And these are just the values I've already found before I've decided to record this video. And basically that moves you from the far left screen in the middle all the way to the far right one. Go ahead and scroll down a little bit again. We're gonna unclick this uh, use composition shutter angle. Then we're gonna go ahead and change it back to 180 again. So we have that nice little shutter angle again. Now we're gonna go to back to our position with the little drop down arrow here. We're gonna change these keyframes to be just like the Bezier zooms we have covered already. One thing I did forget to mention with these keyframes, make sure that where this peak is, is in the middle of the two clips. Now you can do this by just grabbing your playhead and your timeline, moving it to where your clips are cutting between each other, then and just grabbing these keyframes and then moving them however much you want until they're even. So, and eh, that's about close enough there. And play, we're gonna go ahead and play this out. And there you go, a nice little zoom on over. The next thing we're gonna be cuddling the next thing we're going to be covering is this like nice zoom and whenever it's at the end of the zoom it does a nice shake and it kind of adds a little bit to the video it's kind of subtle but it still adds a little bit more so to begin i've already duplicated over that zoom we already did because it's basically the same thing we're going to scroll down a little bit and we're actually going to change these keyframes though to where we're zooming in on this little uh this little loot droid but to get the actual shake effect we're going to come back to the t effects in the top right grab our transform again and drag another one on top of this adjustment layer Go ahead and move this above the other transform so it's easier to work with. Now, whenever we're editing the shake effect, make sure to keep an eye on this transform's keyframes. You're gonna want to have your shake go ahead and start while it's in the middle of the zoom. So whenever it's coming out of the zoom, it doesn't look unnatural. So to begin, we're gonna be editing the scale, position, and rotation for this effect. We're gonna move forward a little bit after the, the zoom is already done. And we're gonna go ahead and set some more keyframes. Now for scale, I'm gonna go ahead and set this at 105. You don't want it to have a lot of zoom here, but it's just something subtle to keep your eyes uh, to keep your eyes occupied. Now for position and rotation, you're gonna be editing them at the same time. But let's say for position, we're gonna go ahead and start with making this first value 965. Then we're gonna move forward a little bit more, and we're gonna change the value to 955. Move forward again, change the value to 963 move forward one more time and we're going to change this value to 957. now essentially what this does is while the shake's going in it's only shaking left to right but we kind of wanted to rotate it a little bit too so exactly where we have these keyframes for position we're going to go down to rotation and we're going to set our first rotation at 0.5 then we're going to move forward to our next position keyframe come back down to rotation set it to negative 0.5 go to the next position keyframe set it to 0.3 Go to the next position keyframe and set it to negative 0.3. Now what you're gonna do for all these keyframes, including this position and the rotation, is you're gonna to go to temporal interpolation, go to Bezier, select that, do the same thing for your rotation, Bezier. And as we can see in our preview window, we've got a little uh, nice shake going on whenever you're done with your zoom. All right, so now for the last effect we're gonna be doing, there are times when you have an, uh, a graphic basically just kind of pop on a screen and oscillate a little bit. It's pretty simple to do, so let's go ahead and hop into this last one. Now, in our case, we're gonna be editing Arnold here, and maybe we'll get some more kisses later. Now, to begin this one, we're gonna go back to the effects in the top right here, look for our best friend transform because we use it for basically everything. Go ahead and drag it on top of your image that you wanna have bouncing in. Go to your effects controls in your top left, scroll on down, and this whole time we're gonna be editing the scale. So we'll go ahead and start animating this keyframe by hitting the stopwatch. We'll move it back a little bit forward. This first keyframe value to zero. Then we're gonna move in kind of towards the side of the 100 keyframe first. Then we're gonna go ahead and set one for 110. And we're gonna go move forward a little bit more. We're gonna set a keyframe value for 95. And then we're gonna set another keyframe value for 103. Now grab all of these, go ahead and turn them into Bezier again, just like the rest of the effects. And then as we see in our preview window, he kind of just slowly pops in and oscillates a little bit. And if you want your Arnold to pop in a little bit faster, just grab your keyframes here and move it a little bit closer to this first keyframe. And there you go, he kind of just moves in a bit quicker, but uh, that's basically it. 
All right, guys, I kind of wanted to cover Pokey's video outro, but dude, there is so much going on and it take a lot of time to do. It honestly deserves its own video. So if you want to see that in, another, in a future video, let me know down in the comments below. I'll make a whole video for it and explain and everything. But also, I want to give a lot of props to Pokey's video editor. They do an extremely good job at highlighting her personality and keeping these videos very interesting. But hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If so, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below if there's another effect or somebody else you want me to cover in another video. And uh, make sure to go check out my main channel where I put a lot of these effects into use and until next time peace i just dropped the, are you kidding me? this dude i dropped the healing thing for him and he he's just ignoring it are you kidding me come get your fucking heels are you crazy